Welcome to Linksai YouTube channel. My name is Ramesh Shah and I am in the online class. So what's in this video? In this video, I will tell you how to solve unit theory and one exercise, right? I've given the topic and before, before we started, I have taken the unit theory and some points which is what is the unit cube and the unit cube. Unit cube is an open source tool that allows you to run a single node Kubernetes cluster locally on your machine. Unit cube is designed to make it easy for developers to set up this cluster environment for local environment, development purpose or testing purpose. It creates a lightweight, isolated Kubernetes cluster that run inside a virtual machine on your local system, right? If we talk about the requirements, free request of Minikube, Minikube system requirement could be like 2 GB RAM or more, 2 virtual core CPU or more, 20 GB free hard drive space or more, Docker, virtual machine manager, KVM, VirtualBox or VMware. In this demo, we will be using Docker container as a base for Minikube. So let's begin the lab session. We'll see how we can work with the Minikube. As you can see, this is my Linux terminal. Currently, I'm using RHEL 9.2. Let me show you the OS release version of first machine. So, cat, etc. Red Hat release. You can see this is 9.2. So, let's start with the first part to install Docker in this machine. By default, Docker is not available in RHEL ISO. So, let me go to my notepad where I have write down the, all the steps one by one. Later on, I will share this information in my description for your record and necessary action. Right? So, this is my notepad. So first of all, we need to remove the conflict package using DNF, remove podman and builder. So let me paste, press enter. So first of all, we are going to, re I'm going to remove the conflict packages. By default, we have lines from this code line. So we need to replace podman with Docker engine, right? So for that reason, I use yum remove podman builder command. And then once it's removed successfully, what will the next step? Next step is that we need to add Docker repository using dnf install hyphen yum utils. First of all, we need to install this package. And after all, I will use dnf config manager add repo to add this repository, right? So let me copy this one. Let it be removed first, then we will copy, install that. Verifying, done. Let me remove, let me install it. Yum utils, successfully installed. And now what I will do, I will go DNF config manager, add repository, add this docker hyphen repo file. Let me copy, paste. Okay, now next part, install the docker and start the service. So just copy that one, press enter, and paste. So DNF install Docker package with container DIO and then system CTL enable this Docker services and make it permanent on across the next remote. So once this is fully installed, what we will do, we will check the Docker status using system CTL status Docker command. So let me install first. Now you can see started. Okay, key importing successfully, preparing,
installing these packages. Ten out of ten complete. Taking some time, let it be complete. Just wait. I'm not going to pause the screen, so just wait. Yeah, where find complete successfully? Let's check the status, right? System CTL status Docker Docker service. Yep, should be active, running, and enable. Perfect. Now check the Docker version. Docker hyphen hyphen version. Okay, twenty four point zero dot four is there. Now go to the next step, which is download and install Minikube binary. So we can download Minicamp binary from given the available URL in my notepad. So let me go to this path, wget, and copy this entire path, paste it, disconnect it, start it. Then what we will do, we will copy this Minicube hyphen linux hyphen amd64 and paste it in usr local bin minikube and then i will give the executable permission then i remove the minikube hyphen linux amd64 and then we will go with the version right so let it be complete okay Save successfully on my local location. Copy and paste. Go to the USR local bin minicube bin and say minicube is there. Give them executable permission. Minicube. Remove the original one from my root directory. And now you can see that minicube version is there. Yeah. We can successfully install Minikube. Now move to the next step, which is install kubectl. To deploy and manage cluster, you need to install kubectl. This is this is the official command line tool for kubectl. So let me download the kubectl and make it executable from USR local bin folder. 
just like we have done for the mini cube right so for cube ctl this is the url so let me copy and again i will execute from my low home location curl command is there okay let it be download from the https storage dot this location fifty seven percent complete sixty percent complete so let me try to explain here it will download then we need to give the executable permission then i will copy from my current location to the usr local bin and then i can remove this the whatever i have downloaded and then we can verify using qctl version hyphen o json client command line tool what is my current version of my qctl command so now you can see that it is there cp qctl usr local bin let me remove from here qctl then go to usr local bin ch mode plus x qctl and i can check the version qctl version hyphen o json so now you can see the version is there major version is 1 and minor version is 27 right so now we have successfully installed kubectl now move to the next step which is start mini cube so starting mini cube on linux what we need to do now that components are installed and you can start mini cube so vm image will be downloaded and configured for kubernetes single node cluster as we already discussed in the beginning that we will be using docker as a base for mini cube so start the mini cube with the docker driver run what we need to do we will run the command mini cube start hyphen hyphen force so once you just run this command hyphen hyphen force means if you want to wish to continue as root use hyphen hyphen force so i am currently working with the root user account so i'm using hyphen hyphen force command and utility right so uh, so basically what it would it does what uh, first the system download the mini cube iso from an online source and the local cube binary then it creates a virtual machine and docker uh, within which it starts and configure as a single root right so now we need to wait for download the image and let the setup complete then we will confirm that everything is working fine or not using some command line tool so using some common uh, minikube commands like status and something like that so just wait let it be complete i'm not going to pause the screen uh, you will see each and every steps so if anything is going to be happen wrong at least we can troubleshoot and debug that one right so just wait for a couple of minutes
approx 87 percent completed so just wait let it be complete 97 98 and it completed perfect How will it take 10 to 15 minutes to complete the entire setup? So that's why it will take some time. Ninety five percent completed, six, seven, eight, nine, hundred. Okay. See, it's automatically select the driver, uh, select a Docker driver. Otherwise, we have none or such. See, it's clearly mentioned the Docker driver should not be used with the root privileges. If you wish to continue as root, use hyphen hyphen force. That is the reason I start hyphen hyphen force to go with the root user account, right? Otherwise, you create a user and then you can run this one. Let it be complete. You can see that it's creating Docker container, two CPUs, memory, double to zero, double zero MB. So this time it's creating a Docker container, right? From that image, whatever it's pulled. So that is the beauty of Minikube, you can see that we don't here need to do anything, just sit and relax and then the command Minikube start, it will do automatically each and everything for us. No need to any too much for the manual interaction, right? But this is only for the learning purpose, I told you earlier, or testing purpose. Preparing Kubernetes, generate certificate and keys. Booting up. Soon we will get the final welcome screen if everything is okay.
configuring business network, verifying Kubernetes components. Perfect. Done. Now you can see that we got the final message Kube Kotal is now configured to use Minikube cluster and default namespace by default. So let's move common Minikube commands to verify they execute the following command like Minikube status. Let me check the status first. What is the current status? So Minikube type is control plane and running, running, running and configure. Okay, now let's check the Docker images and Docker container. So Docker images. See currently the Minikube image is there, which is sizing 1.19 GB. And if we go with Docker PS command, you can see that one container is ready, which is known as Minikube, right? Now uh, one container is already done, right? We can run the kubectl kubectl cluster info command. kubectl kubectl cluster info information about your cluster so you can see that current uh, we can uh, verify the uh, kubernetes version and node status and cluster info so cluster information is running on 68.49.2 right this is the ip address of this machine and let me go with the nodes so kubectl get nodes how many nodes we have so this is the single one which is the mini queue right even we can get the information of available port. So currently you can see that I don't have currently any port in default web namespace. I can take in the, I can take the SSH of the Minikube machine from my base machine using the Minikube command. So I can use the Minikube SSH. Once I press enter, I can move to the Minikube node. Now currently you can see that I am in Minikube node. I can run sudo su hyphen cat etc os release. This is Ubuntu 22.0.4 long term service support, right? And let's move to the very last step, the final step, verify Minikube installation. To verify Minikube installation, let's try to deploy one SCTPD pod in Minikube cluster, right? So let me make a pod.yml file. Pod.yml file. I'll go back for the code for one more time in notepad file. Let me copy this one safely and paste it here. Okay. So guys, you can see that this is my pod demo pod file where my pod name is first pod and it will launch one SCDB container named C1. So let me save and quit and run the cube kettle apply hyphen f pod dot yaml. Let it be deployed. Okay, pod first pod is successfully created. Then we can run cube kettle get ports hyphen o white hyphen w for more information. So now you can see that container is creating, right? So just wait, let it be complete. Then I will show you the information of this container image. Now you can see that it is in running condition and node IP is 10.22244.0.0.3 and the node is Minikube, right? So you can see that container is in running in the Minikube node and uh, it is in up and running condition. Let's move to the Minikube node and check container output. So again, I need to go with Minikube SSH and uh, I can use curl command curl 10.244.0.3 once I press enter. Hey, it's work. Great, above confirm that our Apache application is visible, it is work, we can access our web application. If you want to move inside this container, we can use kubectl exez command. So I'll exit from here and I run kubectl exec execution. Then, or before going to execution, let me go to describe something. D-E-S-C-R-I-B-E describe pod, my pod name is first pod, right? So once I press enter, you can see that it successfully assigned the pod, pulling the image, created the container, container with C1 and started a container, right? The rest of the, all the information is available here. Container ID and each and everything, the volume and rest of the things are there. So now if we want to move inside that particular container, what we need to do, pod kubectl exec pod name first pod, then hyphen interactive mode i then c container my container is c1 and the bash once i press enter see current 
currently I am in my C1 container. The current working directory is USR local Apache 2. So if you so this is how you can move inside the container, right? So let me exit from there. If you want to start stop minikube cluster, we can use minikube start command or we can use stop command, stop command, or if you want to delete the entire setup, what you will do, minikube delete. Let it be delete. D E L E T E delete. Press enter. Deleting minikube in Docker, deleting containers minikube. So guys, that's all from this demonstration. Finally, this is the end of this topic. Hopefully, you enjoyed the learn new things. Soon, I will come up with another new interesting topic. Till then, keep practicing. If you feel something I have missed or you wanted to know more something else, please reach out through my social media links, which is mentioned in the description. If you like this video, please do not forget to like, share, and subscribe my channel and press the bell icon button for the latest update. Thanks for saving. Thanks for watching. Stay safe and goodbye.